giving all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Akakwadash, the true name of the Heavenly Father, based upon faith, is Yahweh. You have the Tetragrammaton, the Ya, Ha, Wa, and Ha, which when we read it, we say Yahweh. The scholars uh, all agree that the name of the the God of Israel, the Supreme God of Israel, is Yahawaha. And his son's name is Yahawashai. If we're pronouncing it right or wrong, we will know in the spirit. But I have been attacked by demons from the spiritual realm, from the fourth dimension, many times, and I called on the name of Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, and rebuked them, and they left, just like Michael did to Satan in Jude, uh, which is one trap chapter long. Now, when I called on the name, well, you knew, here come the demons, effing with me, it's in between the, uh, uh, almost awoke and half awoke and half sleep. So you're not really alert. You know, your guards are kind of down. So now, when you identify them as being demons or, you know, spirits, you go to call on the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai because you can't move your mouth. You have to say it in your mind. Because they, they, Esau calls it, the scientists call it sleep paralysis. So now, when I called, you realize that you can't actually say, you know, rebuke them with your mouth. So you have to rebuke them with your mind, which is your spirit. And uh, when I would go to say the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, they, they would enter into my mind, that part of my brain, and tr attempt to make me say Satan. And I would almost say, 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 and I would catch myself, and I would fight it, and say, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, and they would go. And you can feel lightweight, there's, 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 there's level to the de demon game. You can feel the lightweight demons, they go away quick. You rebuke them. There was one night when when some spirits came and I felt them, I almost saw them with my spiritual eye. Them coming, they came, they came up high on the ceiling and they were coming down like missiles on me. And I saw them in the spirit and I got mad. And in my mind, I was like, y'all ain't gonna mess with me tonight. That was my attitude. I didn't call on Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. And I felt them go in reverse and leave. It's like they were saying, let's not mess with him because he's a powerful spirit. Let's leave this guy alone. We'll come back the next time. There's some spirits that feel heavy to you, like a weight. And you know that they're higher level demons or heavier demons so I can lack of a better term there's level to the demon game <laughs> that's <laughs> that's a topic right there there's levels to the demon game so some of them heavyweight demons will come and you call on the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh I rebuke them and they wouldn't they won't leave and then you say it again you might say it a third time and you're mad too because you know you're not scared at first you get scared but then you don't get scared you get mad before you get scared I had a a, a nine millimeter pull on pull I had guns pull out on me knives and shit but I had a nine millimeter pull on me from this this uh Negroid and my woman and um you're supposed to be afraid when somebody pulls out a nine but our reaction was anger over the fear. So I said, put that motherfucking gun away, nigga. Something to that effect. And he put it down and he ran. Because he pulled it out on somebody else. So I came to the rescue of that person, so to speak, because we heard commotion. 
And it was like we looked at him like, you got you got nerve enough to pull out a nine on me? And even my woman said, Dad, you said, are you out your fucking mind pulling out a fucking gun? So you better put that motherfucker away, nigga. <laughs> and he, he put it down. And then he just left. You know, we didn't call the cops or anything like that. But uh, anyway, there's a... Uh, I went all I went into that rant because of the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. You got guys out there playing with the name. You know, this clown, Nate, wants to say the name, but then again he don't want to say the name. So he's playing around. He's you know, he he's playing games. You know, like I said, we believe that he sold the fuck out. But anyway, we're gonna find out if he truly sold out sold out, whether we he's with the most high or not. We're gonna find out when they make the uh, microchip mandatory. So this, by the way, is a, is a dream. And I said this, I said this at the closing of the camp. I said, some of you guys, don't, I said, don't be surprised if some of you brothers standing here take the chip and not tell brothers and come to the camp with the chip in them. That was just, I'd put it out there, you know? I said, some of you guys, it's best that you don't have women in this time because your women, they're not gonna, they're not gonna be. You might say, I'm not taking them. Fuck that. That's a mic. That's a MOTB. The micro C hip. I'm not taking it. Fuck that. And your woman, you know, she been playing that Hebrew Israelite thing. You, she been playing house with your ass. And then when it actually comes, and you getting these notices. You know, you you don't get a food stamp, you don't get welfare, you don't get Section 8. You got, you know, you register. And for now, when you register your car, you got to get a chip, or whatever the case may be. We don't know exactly how it's going to play out. So she's going to say, look, dude, I got to eat, and um, we got children. And you might say no and convince her not to, but she might go out and get get herself chipped and there's a woman in the military there's a video somebody can find it give it to me i probably got it in my favorites but i got to find it where she brat she was in the military her husband's in the military jake woman and she's bragging about how she got the micro c hip and she got in the military that they were ordered to get it and i believe he didn't have it he didn't get it because it's semi uh you violent semi-voluntary and she had put her uh, hand on the scanner, and she said, I got a chip in me. And her husband came, and, and then he, you know, she said, yeah, I got it. And I, mean, I already set up an appointment for the kids to get it. But it was a short, so if anybody can find it, I'm pretty sure I got it somewhere, but I got to look for it. So anyway, this right here is a, a dream that this uh, brother had from G GMS that uh, the G the GMS uh, South Carolina 08 put up. And I, it's probably a re, I don't know if you're going to say listen to this much. But um, I'm going to, matter of fact, right about here. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come over here. So from about here to here, he's he's building up to that he had. So about here, he gives a dream. Let's see. So vision of betrayal and MOTB. GMS Goodly Heritage. On a couple of days for 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 a reason, because it was just like a sensitive, something sensitive, and I was kind of mourning in in a, in a way. Um, and um, within dream, I'm walking up to the brother, and everything seems kind of normal, but the spirit is kind of off. Okay, and. Uh, this is a vision, by the way. Then I, another brother comes, okay, was who I know very well, and I'm looking at him, and you know his, like his spirit was right, okay, and there was an officer that came up. There happened, it had to be some type of uh, martial law trooper, police officer that came up, and he was looking at us, and he asked for like basically a registration and stuff. <laughs> Which I understood in the dream that that's the, you know, the Karagma. And we were like, what? You know, we was like, where did that come from out of nowhere? 
you know, that he just acts as that, but, you know, he asked for a registration in the Karagma and me and the, me and the one brother that I knew very well, you know, it, there's a certain spirit that we were like, oh, okay, cool. You know, let us, you know, try to fake it out and, you know, fake it out or the spirit was going to intercess and it did. So he tried to come and scan us for the Karagma and his machine went off saying that we had it and we didn't have it. You know, so the machine malfunctioned. Okay. When it, when he scanned brothers, you know, it malfunctioned and he's like, okay, y'all, are y'all good to go? But the weather that I was uh, seeing when he asked for the registration, his spirit got real nervous. And we looked at the brother like, what's going on, man? And he was like, he didn't say nothing. He was shy off, like, you know, chilled off. And the spirit told me like, oh, we looked at him. We was like, he took it. He, he, he took the karagma, okay? And, and didn't tell brothers that he took it. But he took it. And then on top of that, he went to he went to go reveal his hand, like reveal his hand, and there was a boil. There was like a, a some type of uh, sore that was on his hand, man. And that's when we knew that he took it, man. Yeah, there, it was a boil. It was a cancer, because it's going to produce a cancer. Because this, they might you might say. Well, out there in Sweden, you got all kind of Edomites taking it, and they ain't getting no cancers because they haven't hooked it up with the, um, you know, the 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 Cinco J and the Cinco C. I mean, the 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 uh, the, uh, the 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 Cinco the Cinco J and the C J. If you know Spanish, 5G and 6G, that's going to be working. That's going to be communicating with your karagma. So now it's just like a credit card. When they have it communicating with your karagma, that's when it's going to produce that uh, that source. So let's get that further proven that this is a a uh, physical thing because it's physical thing that's going to be put into you. It's going to work with the uh, the Cinco, Cinco J and the the the, uh, the Seis J. That communication, which is radiation, is going to cause that sore, and it only makes all the sense. It makes it makes complete sense. So you other camps, you're gonna you're gonna have a lot of explaining to do. Let me go. Uh, let me go over here. I'm sorry. Let me I'm gonna go right over here. Come on now. Let's go to Revelation 15. The only ones that's going to make it out of it. The places that will be destroyed, because you got Nate saying that uh, everything, Rome is going to be wiped off the map. Germany is going to be utterly destroyed. There's no more islands. The whole world. That's not going to happen. It's going to happen to two, two main places. P places are going to get jacked up. Buildings are going to fall from the earthquake. But the two places that's going to be utterly destroyed is Babylon the Great and... Um, Palestine, but Palestine is going to be built back up, the the headquarters of the kingdom, so to speak. But Babylon will never be built back up. But Russia is going to be intact, Germany is going to be intact, Rome is going to be intact. But there's going to be some damage. Okay, and I saw. Another sign in heaven, the great and marvelous seven angels having the seven last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of Yahweh. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass 
mingle with fire. We're going to be above the firmament, looking down at the fire. We're going to be hovering over Babylon the Great. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast. Who's going to get the victory over the beast? The elect among Israel. And over his image. The image is not a picture of Caesar Bogier. It's talking about his system. And because ultimately when you take the stamp of approval is when you take the mark. That means you are part of the system. That means you are part of the B system and you're following the image, which which is based upon the pagan Roman Empire 2,000 years ago. Over his mark, the word there is karagma, a physical thing, and over the number of his name, because it's going to be based on it's digital. It's a digital system. Stand on the sea of glass, meaning we're going to be up above the sea of glass in ships, having the harps of the Most High. So you're going to have beautiful music in the ships. And they sang, and they sing this, the song of Moses. By the way, the song of Moses is not, a, what is that, Exodus, Exodus 15? The song of Moses is Deuteronomy 32. That's an actual song. It's a psalm, so you can understand. The servant of the Most High and the song of the Lamb, which is Yahweh Shai, saying, That's the Most High, that's the Lamb. That's Yahweh, that's Yahweh Shai, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Yahweh, and glorify thy name? There it goes again. For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. The other nations will come and worship because they're going to follow the new system. So now let me jump to chapter 16. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, we read about the seven angels in the last, verse, last chapter, go your way and pour out the vials or the pestilence of the wrath of the Most High upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worship his image. So where did that sore come from? It came from the karagma. It's not sin in all of its uh, forms. You listen to Nate, you're going to fail. He better repent. Because if let's say he don't repent and he tells his people to do it. The majority of them are going to do it. Some of them are going to wake up. Maybe them two knuckleheads, Kanai and uh, Yawasab, maybe they'll wake up at the net last minute. But if they don't and they go ahead and take it, that's their asses. But you're going to get a sore first. So let's come on back. So he, let me bring this back. He went to he went to go reveal his hand, like reveal his hand, and there was a boil. There was like a uh, some type of uh, sore that was on his hand, man. And that's when we knew that he took it, man. And it was like the ultimate form of betrayal because I'm looking at this brother. I'm like, all this work and toilage that we did together. All this, uh, 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 you know, put in, you know, the hours of, you know, helping brothers and doing all these things. And it's really not a betrayal on, 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 unto me, you know, because, you know, I'm, I'm only but a man. But it was, a, it was like a second hand betrayal because we know you, betray, you just betrayed Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. 
And that's what that test is all about in uh, Revelation um, 3, verse 10. It says, an hour of temptation. In King James, it says, the great time of testing in the uh, NLT. So that's the ultimate test. If you take it, you're not one of the elect. Okay. It was just, you know, you know how you get like secondhand embarrassment. You know, you're not necessarily the one that's getting fully embarrassed, but you're seeing something and you're getting that secondhand embarrassment. It was like that. Okay. It was, I call it secondhand betrayal. Okay. Because the spirit let us know that this individual who claimed to be a brother that was around that knew the breakdowns that, um, was out there on the highways and by and maybe he was sincere this brother maybe he was a hundred percent sincere but at the end of the day he was found out to be not of the elect and i want to say something there's a couple of videos put up uh with uh captain tazariak talking about the sister's sister call Calling about this situation with uh, her son and her car, you know, leaving. Uh, her car her, was her son got kicked out, and at that same during that same time period, uh, her car left. So maybe it was a plan that they had on the side. What we're gonna do? You, you, if he kick you out, I'm leaving with you. And we got certain guys we know that's gonna follow us. Whatever the case may be. So they got their own thing now. They ain't. I don't see them coming back anytime soon. So So anyway. Anyways. Cap the captain Cesariac is talking about it. And he's kind of mad at her son, her son and uh her car. Deacon the car brothers her son. And he's and he says he says not too many words. I'm cool with uh, uh, priest uh, Alazar. So I heard on a couple of videos, and he said I guess they exchanged numbers. Now this this guy uh, Alazar gave me his number, wrote it on me. Yeah, here's my number. I never accepted it. Never gave him my number, cause I'm not a number person. I don't give a not not too many people. Hey, the only ones that have my number is uh, the top. You know, like the the uh, the apostles and the bishops and a few of the brothers that came up in the ranks. Maybe maybe two or three brothers, I guess. You know, I'm not the type of guy. Well, here's my number. You can call me because motherfuckers call you at crazy hours man and you might not feel like talking you might feel he's in the mood to talk and you know and then you tell him you know i gotta go and they can they take a half an hour for them to say they go on, they, they goodbye and whatnot and i don't like being on i don't like being on the phone you know i, t I talk to uh the apostles or even uh the bishops or any of the elders and some of the few young brothers it's it's a uh, you know, no more than 30 seconds a minute. They tell me, what's up? And that's it. Okay, Shalom, I got it. Goodbye. Shalom, have a good day. Um, so anyway, so the captain made a statement, you know, that that was messed up what they did. You know, me, in not too many words, me and uh, uh, Priest uh, Alazar are cool. You know, we talk on the phone and he, told me and I know what's going on behind the scenes and blah 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 so uh, this is maybe the third or fourth video that I saw him making that statement with, with a woman calling sister calling and uh, I said oh okay they're cool ain't nothing, wrong, ain't nothing wrong with that so how cool are they though is uh, priest uh, Alazar because that's his title, priest. Is he cool enough to tell him that, look, brother, the MOTB is a microchip? Or is he saying, I'm not going to say that? Um, let me be politically correct, as they say. Religiously co correct or whatever. 
or did he straight up tell them? Because if they that cool, hey, hey, look, if I'm cool, if let's say me and me and uh, Captain Zariak is cool, right? He's in the lifting weights. I take him to the gym. I take him to a boxing gym, and I give him the, the hardest deadly workout. He gonna crawl out that damn. He gonna crawl out that dr- gym, and he gonna realize, yo, boxing, MMA, you know, uh, kickboxing. Muay Thai and stuff like that, martial arts, real martial arts. That's you gotta be, you gotta be special. And I, I can, I almost see him saying, "Oh, I'm not gonna weight lift no more. I'm just gonna do the boxing thing." And plus, I used to beat back in the day. I used to, I used to spar guys that were way bigger than me, that played semi-pro college ball, that were way bigger than me. That I used to spar with them and play with them, and they couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe that they able to uh, military press 250 pounds, uh, bench press 400 pounds. They bigger, you know, they're looking at me. I'm a little guy compared to them, and I'm hitting them with body shot. This is when I was in my 40s, no, mid-40s. And I remember the one guy, he was, a, he was a, one of the tribes. He was a Sicilian descent. A big, strong guy, you know. And he, he used to grab me, say, "Take it easy, take it easy." I remember, I remember. I said, "I am taking it easy. I'm not hurt. I'm not hitting you hard. I'm just touching you, bro." He said, "No, you're not. You're hitting me hard, man. <laughs> you hit me hard." There was a point he stopped coming back to the back of the gym where the boxing thing is. He, he said, oh, "I'll see if I see Tahar. I ain't even going back there because he wanted to spar and he wanted to beat me up." But I let him hit me. I said, "You can hit me as hard as you want." But anyway, he kind of had a new re- f- respect for boxing. So I can see uh, Captain Zazarek, if I took him to a gym and gave him my deadly workout, he'd crawl out the gym. And he's ca- crawling out saying, boy, I'm in tip-top shape. I'm going to the gym, hitting the weights. He'll say, fuck the weights. Or he'll do weights differently. He'll do lighter weights, more reps. So let's say me and him was cool, right? And we talking. I'm going to tell him, look, brother, the MOTB is real, brother. And um, you, uh, yeah, you better get with the program. And I'm not, I'm not going to be giggling and laughing. I'm going to say, yo, this is real. Okay, it's going to come. I'm just here to tell you. If you can't see it, you don't accept it, that's on you. But it's going to come. It's going to come. That's why we put so many videos out on the MOTB. And that's the spirit. Spirit jumped on me with a couple of weeks ago, said, keep putting the videos out on the MOTB, the micro C-hip. So that must be, I take it that the spirit is coming through me and through y'all to put it out because it must be around the corner. I see a lot of things happening come gen... Yeah, let's see if there's going to be an election. Let's see if there is going to be a new president or is Kamala just going to become president and uh, and then they uh, suspend the elections or whatever. Let's see. We don't know what's going to happen. We know a lot of shit behind the scenes is happening. So, you know, I just wanted to put that out there. You know, if al Azar want to chime in, you know, whether he told him or not. But if we, we were that cool, I would say, look, brother, the, the whole world is going to get microchip back. And what do you mean to tell me uh, General Rihanna's going? Yes, General Rihanna's going off. So I don't know if he's he, if he's being religiously, spiritually correct. You know, I don't know what the deal is. He got he got to tell me. <clears throat> anyway, let's listen to the rest of this. I ways with us betrayed Yahweh by Shemuel Shai. Okay, all right. He showed forth that his his godhead was Esau, and not Yahweh Shmuel Shai. Now I want to get this. This is um, and the reason I got this specifically because this is like I said, it was a brother, a so called brother, someone that called Yahweh Shai a brother, somebody that called yeah like Lord Yahweh Shai master, okay, somebody that called Yahweh Shai Lord, was the one that betrayed him 
And you're gonna have that in these times where you're gonna have individuals, even, <laughs> and then, you know, <clears throat> it, it hurts saying that, but you gotta have individuals that call themselves um, brothers, great millstone affiliates, whatever. It don't matter. You gotta you gotta have brothers that um, you might have been toiling with all of a sudden, you know, be the one to betray, and then you come to find out this man that's taken the karagma. <laughs> You know, he uh, he truly didn't have faith in your help. I should know, shy. And um, all these things are going to be revealed in the end. But <clears throat> like I said, you know, I, I hold, held off from doing that video. But uh, I'm going to quickly get this, right? This is, um, this is Matthew 17 and um, 22. And they, and, and while they abode in, in, in Galilee, Yahweh Shai said unto them, the son of man shall be betrayed into the hands of men. So Yahweh Shah already knew. Okay. And the reason I got the scripture is that. Remember I read earlier that the servant is not greater than the master. The Lord let us know that ahead of time. These things that fell upon him are going to, you know, happen to us also. Okay. Someone that, mind you, the Lord knew. Also, we don't know. You know, who, who it may be. Okay. Um, but. The spirit will reveal in that time, okay. All right, and within the you know it's crazy with the the finishing up of the dream. You know, like I said, I was walking with the brother, and the brother was acting like everything was normal until that officer came up, and then on top of that, another brother comes who didn't take the karagma, and me and him are in a similar spirit. All right, oh yes, the Lord go get us out of this situation, okay. The officer. Uses a little device, scans us. Oh, y'all clear, y'all good. But we were like, all right, cool, we're gonna let the Lord, because we can't run away. You know, we're gonna let the Lord handle this. And the Lord had the machine malfunction to where it pointed and said, oh, y'all good. And he's like, oh, let me get you real fast. And that brother was like, oh, shit. I went to go scan him. And he, he <laughs> we saw the, the sword on, on his hand, man. And that's when we knew, you know, he took it. But then as we, as he, as that happened, we, we tried to, uh, we tried to get away from him. Like, nah, bro, like, we don't want no dealings with you. You, you know, basically you turn your back on the Lord. And he was like, nah, man, you know, come on brothers, you know, uh, you, you gotta understand. And he tried to follow us. And as we tried to walk away and we turned into an alley, um, you know, spirit said, don't look back at him. Just keep on walking forward. Don't worry if he's following you. <clears throat> But as we turn the corner, we're going down the alley and I can hear him say, yo, brothers, where you at? Where, where did you go? Where'd you go? And that's how I knew in the spirit that as we turned the corner, um, even though it seemed like we were still going up that alley, he couldn't see us. OK, you know, which I perceived the angel blocked him from from seeing us, you know. And so, so, you know, just like I said, it I held off from this because um sensitive, you know. Um, it, it's it's just gonna be that, it's gonna be like that, man. You know, and brothers, we just gotta accept it as a part of the story. Okay, pray that Yahweh Bashim Shai that we be found worthy to you know of salvation, that we be found worthy in that time to be given that strength to not take the karagma. Okay, because um, in, in this in this vision, it just showed me that you know. If the Lord has you written to take it, you're going to take it at the end of the day. doesn't matter how much videos you do. doesn't matter um, if you're out there in the highways and byways. Um, if the Lord has you to take it, you're going to take it. So we pray to Yahweh Bashim al that he strengthens us in these times, that he, um, you know, makes us, you know, that head strong for him. Okay. That we be found worthy to escape all these things, man. Okay. It says, um, I'm gonna get another scripture. It says, uh, Matthew, Matthew 20 and 18. Behold, we, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and shall, and they shall, shall condemn him to death. And you're gonna have some of that fate fall upon some of the members of the elect also okay 
to where you're gonna have individuals who you thought were brothers. You know, when 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 all hell's catching and then the our temptation is brought upon them, they're gonna be the ones to give brothers up. Mind you, you thinking this is a brother, someone that you toiled with, someone that you um you know did the work with, had those intimate moments of, of, of sincerity with and the truth, you know, someone that you thought, you know, you could trust. Um Hey man, <laughs> it's just a part of the story at the end of the day. Okay. You know, no heart, you know. You know, it's like I said, it's kinda hard to explain, but you know, like I said, this is why I just want to get straight to the point with it, you know. These are the things that we're gonna have to suffer because our Lord Yahweh Shai suffered the same thing. Okay. So don't find it strange, Akim, um, if this happens to you. Okay. You know, I pray that, you know, the brothers that I toil with, I pray that all the brothers that we toil with, that we be members of the elect. You know, that we make it, but you're going to have some individuals that are amongst us, even to this time right now, that will take the Karagma. It's, that's just what it is, man. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> hopefully this is edifying to the elected nation of Israel. Okay. Um, the Lord is going to deliver his elect, though, because that's one part of the dream that, you know, I saw that the Lord made a way. Okay. Even though we were getting scanned in the, um, the, the, the machine malfunction to where the officer let us go. So let's get that, man. The Lord is going to defend his elect. Let's get this. This is the book of uh, Second Ezra, chapter 16. One of my favorite verses. It says, um, yep. This is uh, verse 74. It says, matter of fact, I read verse 73. This says, then shall they be known who are my chosen. Okay, in these times, it's going to be evident who's the chosen of the Lord. Okay, okay, who's the elect of the nation of Israel in these times. Okay, you know, for once, they're not going to take the Karagma. Okay, and on top of that, the Lord is going to defend them in the time of trouble. Okay, it's going to seem like even though things are happening, destruction, calamity, um, famine, all these things are happening around them. They're not affected by it because the Lord is protecting them. Okay. It says, he, Hear ye, O my beloved. Oh, it's like uh, verse 73. Then they shall know who are my, be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as gold in the fire. Yeah. It says that in, in Sirach 2, that gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity, that our temptation is going to test you. Believe it or not, you're gonna have individuals who aren't gonna pass that test. That are of, you know, that say that they're of us. You know, it says, um, verse 70, 74, Hear, O you, my beloved, say, if Yahweh Bashan Al Shah, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. So, this is, this is a promise from Yahweh Bashan Al Shah that we have to believe in. Okay. Um, it's a promise to his elect, and the elect are going to believe in that word. But you have individuals who claim to be a part of us, that they're really faking the funk, and the Lord is going to show it in that time, that they truly didn't believe. Okay? Yeah, well, they could really believe, but they're not an elect. Their belief can leave them. You know, Judas Iscariot didn't know what he was going to do. Until he did it, he realized it because it was in the spirit. He didn't co he didn't come in among the the disciples saying there, well, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna you know I'm gonna do some back you know underhanded shit. No, he didn't know that. His spirit jumped on him and make him do that. Mind you, Akim, this is all just written apart. This is all part of the story. Okay. <laughs> I remember my brother said one time, you you <laughs> you won't be surprised if you have a motherfucker that actually took the Krog one and still comes to camp. Man. Um <clears throat> it says um verse seventy five, it says 
Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the Most High is your guide. And now when you look at that word guide, it goes into pastor, which is somebody, a spiritual guide, somebody who leads you. And we're going to need a guide because a guide leads you to uncharted territory, which is Yahweh Bashim El Shai. The uncharted territory is Jacob's trouble, the hour of temptation. Okay. It says, and a guide to them who keep my commandments and precepts, say, if Yahweh Bashim El Shai, then let your sins weigh you down. And let not your iniquities lift up themselves. So the best to, to the best of your ability, do what's right. According to the scriptures. Okay. Do what is right according to the scriptures. Please, Yahweh Bashim El Shai. We want to be like Enoch, okay, who walked with the Lord and was translated. That is a precursor of what was going to happen to the elect. Okay. They were going to walk with Yahweh Bashim El Shai. And then be translated, be beamed up in those ships, be beamed up in the chariots, man. Lord's will would be a part of the elect, man. Okay. But I just want to share that, you know, be aware. Okay. As the scripture says, beware. Okay. Be aware of these things. These things will come to pass. These things will happen. But, you know, none of these things will shake the faith of the elect. So with that, hopefully this edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel. Let give all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rukakadash. Let to give double honors to our apostles, elders, a great millstone, rule well, and taught us the truth according to the Bible. And shalom to the brothers out there that the full comes every person's Christian's word and all righteousness and sincerity. Until next time, to the elect, say shalom. Mm. So there you have it. And I've been saying that quite a bit. I also said that uh, every camp has uh, spies in it. Guys that are in there to spy out your liberty, as the scriptures say. Men crept in unawares. So that's, you know, that's also in the scriptures. You got, you know, local police, maybe federal agents. It's in there, so you can't be. Oh, buddy, don't you know? Don't be going on no double dates. You know, let's get together, me and my my girl and your girl. We gonna get. Nah, brother, you ain't in the world. You let leave your woman home. You gotta be like a hermit, damn near. They didn't have wives, be as though they had none. See, some of y'all think you're just gonna go out, speak, do your videos, and we're just gonna do this forever. We're just going to do this forever, for the next 50 years. Be out, be out there old as hell with walkers and shit, going out there speaking. No, that's not going to happen. This, These prophecies, these last few prophecies are going to take place. And the most I'm going to see if you gonna pass, going to, are going to pass that test, the, the time of great testing. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say Shalom.